It has been a week of touching new lows at the bows, and on Wednesday, the NSE 20 share index sank to a level it last was in February 2009. The index, which tracks the overall performance of the exchange, closed today's trade at 2,488 points. NSE's chief executive, Geoffrey Dundo, says selling off by foreign investors is a key driver of the current state of the market. Uh, a lot of attrition of capital from the frontier and emerging markets into back into the into the developed markets. Uh, we've also seen uh, this this trend in the in the eurozone. The national carrier Kenya Airways closed today's trade valued at two shillings and sixty-two cents, a historic low. But despite such figures, Odundo maintains his optimistic outlook. I think these are these are these are normal market cycles, and uh, I happen to have been in this market for the last. 21 years, and I've seen the highs and the lows, the bulls and the bears, um, and with every five-year cycle, we've seen a very good upside to the market. The market value of all listed shares on the exchange closed Wednesday's trade at 2.3 trillion shillings, indicating a 9 billion shilling loss in investor wealth over the last 24 hours as prices remained on a downward trajectory. Despite the fact that the index is coming down, we are seeing uh, turnovers improving because these positions are providing uh, good entry points for investors. Julian's Amboko, NTV. Right, uh, of course, uh, the 20 share index is a key barometer uh, that signals performance of the Nairobi Security Exchange. We are here to tell us, of course, that was a half year report. How are we performing so far? It seems also uh, this year has not been looking, uh, very, looking up also for the performance of uh, you know, the shares. Right? Yeah, I think the, anyway, the, uh, it, it's all out in the open. The, the, the index is currently below the 2,500 mark. Um, but looking at the factors that have caused this, uh, a large proportion of this, as you know, our market is primarily having more turnover from the foreign markets. <laughs> and um, the impact of what goes on internationally does have an impact on us uh, because we are a, a key market in the frontier markets. Yes. And um, the the price compressions we've seen have been largely as a result of uh, the recoveries of the developed markets and then asset allocations to the frontier markets have been lightening over the last one year. Now, the other factor is that the domestic demand has also been sort of limited uh, because mm -hmm. the pension funds are largely putting money into government securities uh, because they want more stable returns. Uh, there's a lot of pressure from trustees for returns short-term returns from the, uh, on, on the pension and institutional investors. So really the um, aggregate of those effects have had an impact on the market. But what are we doing? I think that's where I wanted to focus, is that um, uh, currently if you look at the market and the performance of the companies, uh, most of our companies, especially the, in the top markets, are actually ex are doing very well. Mm -hmm. The, the profit growth are better. The, the, the whole expansion you've seen, especially among the, the banking sector, is, is look, pretending a good outlook. And even some of the counters today are providing a higher yield than even the treasury bill rates. Oh, really? So the dividend yields mm -hmm. based on the current prices. So for an investor looking at comparative asset classes, I think the market is at a very good discount. And these markets are cyclic. Um, this is not the worst we've seen uh, uh, on the index. I think there's one time the index went to close to 1,000 points. Uh, so in our view, I think we, we foresee uh, a good recovery because we're currently trading at multiples below the average for a frontier market, mm -hmm. which should be at about 12 to 13 times uh, earnings. We are trading below 10. So for investors, this is a good entry point uh, for them to, to look going forward. The other factor is that um, you know, the NSE is a representation of the economy. Mm -hmm. So all these companies that, that all the companies that are listed are in, en are in every economic subsector. So given the current challenges uh, some of the sectors are facing, then these companies being uh, really in those particular sectors mm -hmm. are actually impacted on. And hence you can see a few companies declaring profit warnings, etc. Mm -hmm. And all those create a perception on that the valuation of, of companies is not as strong and investors then would be a bit shy to come to the market. But I am very convinced that uh, uh, we have a very attractive market. If you see the recent developments that we're doing in terms of product uh, diversification, mm -hmm. especially bringing in a derivatives market as the second market in Africa. After South Africa. After South Africa. Mm -hmm. That market does provide, provide protection for a downside in, in the event that prices are going down, you're able to hedge because you can buy a, a contract 
that can actually protect you from that particular downside. But how, how has that actually, you know, boosted liquidity to the borrowers as well? Uh, I think it's it's early days. We've actually just about two months off. Okay. Um, it has started. We've traded over 150 contracts. Is there any flash of interest uh, so far? Yes, so far, so, assessment? Good. so okay. far so good. Uh, a lot of institutional investors are doing the assessment about the infrastructure and the ecosystem. And uh, we are we are very delighted to say that uh, we even completed the, today's expiry of the first contract, meaning that uh, there's a lot of interest coming through. Uh, and really, the what happens with these markets is that they do spur liquidity in the in the spot markets. Uh, because people are able to arbitrage <coughs> opportunities. Uh, and that, that knowledge is what is now gaining currency, and we believe uh, fairly shortly we'll see a lot of institutional investors coming through. Mm -hmm. So given the broadening of the, of the products, et cetera, um, we believe that uh, we've provided uh, a foundation for better growth going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are an efficient market. We are a free market. We do not, uh, we not, allow, we do not provide any caps or flaws or prizes. So we have to respond to the, the economic dynamics. Mm -hmm. And that's really the, the, the effects of what's going on. Right. But yeah. for the common Kenyan who is actually interested to know what derivatives are all about, yeah. it seems, you know, it is high up there on the shelf. Mm -hmm. How is NSE planning also to, you know, <coughs> just bring it down from the high shelf to the lower shelf to be accessible to, you know, people who are interested in that uh, de derivatives, uh, you know, segment? So we've embarked on a very aggressive uh, public education program and uh, providing a lot of information on your digital platform. Let me, let me explain that. Uh, we, we normally have this um, uh, belief that the commoner doesn't understand markets. We launched a product called Emakiba, which yes. is a government bond. Within one year, we have over 500,000 Kenyans who have opened accounts on Emakiba. And, and, and many of them have bought the bond and have earned interest. And I've had interactions with these normal Kenyans, and they do get it. Mm -hmm. So I think we should not always assume that the, the people who invest don't understand. Look at the people who come to AGMs. They're not the youth. They're the old mama, mamas and babas who have been investing in the stock market. That's the profile of shareholders we're seeing in the market. So it's about um, just continuous education. Derivatives is really a product that you need to provide a lot of education. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we, we started with the simplest of products. And uh, we're going to be continuously rolling out. And if you look at the contracts that have traded, these are retails. No institutional so far. These are retail investors who have already traded on these contracts and really are starting to understand what it's all about. It's not going to be a very, um, I would say, uh, uh, a quick start. It's going to be a continuous progressive improvement going forward. So that's what we're embarking on and a very, very aggressive uh, education campaign and rollout mm -hmm. to respective markets. And we're also taking education to the universities. So we are giving content to universities to educate the youth so that they can understand what these products are. And that, that's becoming a very good partnership program which we've started and we believe that's going to continuously help these markets grow. Mm -hmm. These markets are big out there. If you look at the uh, Asian <coughs> markets, in, for instance in China, 90% of derivatives is retail. So it basically proves the point that retail can actually understand and trade on these assets. Mm -hmm. right. All right. Uh, Sally, you have your <coughs> second you understand. Yeah, actually, um, <coughs> people like us, yeah, like me personally, I'm really a layman it comes to matters of uh, <laughs> stock exchange. But uh, <coughs> I think Which what is, is good now, you can actually relate that to most Kenyans <laughs> who don't really understand, so that we can actually and, you know, yeah, you break can, it down you, for them. You can see where the knowledge level is. Eh? Now, I think it's good, whatever they're doing, because um, I believe people are always shy going to the stock market if um, <coughs> they do not have the correct information. So actually, the issue of sensitization of the public about what opportunities are there, not only opportunity, but also risks. Mm -hmm. And then the other issue is that uh, it's not even about telling them that the, this is a, this Nairobi Stock Exchange operates like this, but also equipping them with adequate knowledge so that they can be able to make decisions on where or on what to invest in. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the other issue is that uh, <coughs> the last time I, I went into, I, I attempted to invest in the stock market. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I approached somebody who gave me a very rosy picture about KQ at the time. I remember we, we, we were buying shares at 95 shillings at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know whether KQ is still trading, but uh, <laughs> based on the, the, the money that I invested there, then obviously you realize that uh, not every other person will be keen to take that type of risk. Yes. What am I saying? I think it is good for the stock market uh, to come up with, I don't know whether it exists, but to come up with an insurance uh, 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 policy to cushion such losses. 
Because once someone is convinced, you may realize that somebody can get his life saving <coughs> and does the investment in the stock market. But because of the nature of the operations, and then you realize that um, he has wiped up all his, uh, his or her savings in this particular aspect. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's something that they may need to, 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 to think about. The other issue also is that uh, you look at it vis-a-vis -vis the existing alternatives. Like if someone has money and he wants to invest, where, where, and this person obviously will want to have uh, very high returns. You realize that people uh, uh, tend to favor the real estate, the idea of just buying a plot, uh, waiting for a few days or months, yes. or years, and sell at a premium. <laughs> So it's good even as they educate the public. They also look at uh, the existing alternatives and also see how they can be brought in. Mm -hmm. I know there are very strict um, uh, NSE guidelines. Uh, uh, there are very strict requirements for you to be listed. Yeah? But I think it will, it, will, it will be good if they can be able to see how they can be able to bring in <coughs> what is emerging to be an alternative uh, uh, recreative investment, like especially in the construction industry <coughs> and in the real estate. And then the other thing is that uh, I think also they, they, they should also think about target, target marketing. You realize that there are a group of people really who holds money, uh, like especially like uh, I know in uh, the lawyers, at times you realize that they really hold quite uh, some money and uh, they may want maybe to invest on a short term uh, arrangement. Yes. You see this is where maybe the banks beat them. So you realize the best thing you put an FDR for three months as you try to conclude a transaction or something like that. So if there are products, I don't know where they are there, but if there are products that um, the NSC can come up with, whereby we know that uh, with certainty of getting back the, the, the returns, uh, if we invest it, we can be able to get the returns, we can be able to get the money as and when you require it, then I think that is one of the things that you'll be able to, to, to cushion. Another thing that uh, has made very many people shy is that um, the issue of management of, of, of the listed companies. We've seen uh, what has happened to Uchumi, we've seen what has happened to KQ, you've seen what is happening to NBK, whereby you see mismanagement uh, comes in. And that one actually uh, erodes the shareholder value or the, or the value of the, of the, of the whatever that they have put in. But I think one thing I, would, I really want to loud them about is the Emma Kiba. Quite a number of people actually I know they, are, they have really done it. And it's actually uh, uh, working. So maybe they may want to relook at their, their operating guidelines and see how they can be able to attract a, 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 wider, a wider market. I don't know Emma Kiba. No. Yeah. Habili, yeah. uh, you got something to say before we yeah, I mean, come the, back to... The, 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 I think I, I totally agree with, the, with what has been said. The only thing that I can maybe reiterate is the thing about public education. Yes. And make, you know, create public awareness. And I think we should not just leave it to NSC or CMA to do that. I think it's, it's, it's a responsibility that we all have. A number of issues that have come up, for example, um, uh, Geoffrey mentioned the thing about um, uh, the cyclicality of, of, of the market and the fact that um, possibly this is the right time when the price are discounted, the point whereby is the right entry point. Now, many of us may not be aware of the fact that you can actually know at what point in time to come in. If you are looking at the long term, because you don't go into the capital markets to invest for harvesting tomorrow. Yes. I think you go into it to look at it from a long term perspective. And so the right entry point matters. But I think the critical thing is the fact that you need to create the public awareness. We mentioned about derivatives. Yes. No, derivatives is a word that tends to send shockwaves in many of us. <laughs> Even for me, partly I have to practice to, way, to get it right, uh, you yeah, know, to trip off my tongue. Yeah, partly because of the way um, <laughs> the, the use of derivatives evolved, yes. and especially in the developed markets. Initially, it was meant to be a risk management tool f to enable players to manage their respective risks. Mm -hmm. But eventually it became, a pro it had now profit motive. Yes. And I think that's where things became a little bit, you know, um, um, uh, fuzzy for many of us and we lost sight of what the original purpose was and went haywire. No wonder we then now got into the risks that we got into, mm -hmm. including the, the financial crisis that, uh, that there was. So I think the critical thing is to have public education where we know what is the use of these products. Mm -hmm. The derivatives, for example, mm -hmm. what are they used for? Are we going to go in there to make profits out of them, or are we going to go in there to manage our risks? So I think that's a critical thing that we need to reserve some bit of time and just create the public education that is required out of it. Right. Now, to, to his point about uh, the fact that, you know, um, uh, you go into an, an IPO and, um, you know, the prices tank yes. and you have borrowed money from a bank, that's a very, very critical point. And I think, again, public awareness. It is a wrong strategy to go and use debt to invest in equity. Because the returns on the equity are long term. 
Mm -hmm. Debt, you're supposed to start repaying it on the next day, the next installment, and you've got a very clear repayment term. If on your revenue side you're not guaranteed, you'll not be able to meet your obligations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you need to get the right kind of funding to invest in equity. When their last IPO, I think that was, uh, if I'm not wrong, I think it was at Safari Yeah, there was quite a bit of a rush. People getting bank loans, for example, to invest in the Safaricom IPO. That's the wrong strategy. Mm, mm. Because if, for example, the IPO was being issued at, uh, was it at five shillings? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, supposing the next few days the price actually went down, and for a bit of time it remained at four yes, or yes. something, you know? For the longest, and even guys are giving up. They're saying, why? Time, Did I make the wrong investment? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But banks were really encouraging us to go for those. Uh, to <laughs> get loans, you're in trouble. So you need to get the right kind of funding to be able to invest in that. And the point is public education. Public education. Yes. Mm. <laughs> especially, yeah, especially on the Emma Kiba. Because uh, you know, it's a good product, yeah. but there's a lack of awareness among, amongst it. the populace about the beauty of this. And I think you normally cut it too close, you know, when actually you're going to roll it out, then we have uh, maybe a bit of media campaigns, very brief, and then we see, yeah, it is closed. So many people, I'm like, oh, there was a, such a short... You know, window period for guys to actually uh, invest in Emma Kiba. Yeah, I think it's about, um, and thank you very much. I want to give a right of reply here. Uh, Beginning with the insurance. Emma Kiba has been there for the last one year, and we've done over four different issues, and continuous public education has been happening. I do appreciate it's going to be a, it's a long term product. It's something that will continuously educate people. But let me tell you, with every new issue we're getting, we're getting new investors coming in, and a lot of interest coming through. Um, I think it's Kenyans who we, we'll, we basically we'll have to, it's, we're going to ha really have to work a lot towards uh, providing that deep education because you are talking about an, an investment that's giving you a double digit return mm -hmm. net. I mean, you compare to interest rates that you're getting currently, the other options, this was just the best product that one could ever have. So we've used a lot of info, social media, we've used uh, above the line media, we're using more and more one-on-one -on -one educations and we we'll continuously provide that education. So it just behoves on us to open up our minds to really understand that this is a very, very attractive product. So we're going to continue with that and there's no doubt that a lot of education is required. Capital markets all over is continuously about education. Let me ask you, this market has been here since 19, 1954 mm -hmm. <coughs> and I believe education has been going on. I think it's Kenyans, our sentimental attachment to certain asset classes for a long time that is, make, is not making us see the other opportunity. So Kenyans love real estate, and we've had continuous appreciation of the real estate sector in the country. But now that we are even fixing, facing a, a sort of a compression on the real estate prices, mm -hmm. people are looking at alternatives. Um, your point about... Um, Before you even uh, move on to another point, because that, that uh, you know, us being obsessed with the real estate, is it because also the NSC seems to be a preserve of... Uh, the, the elite sort of, you know, people who cannot really understand that particular segment. Because for a lot of Kenyans uh, out in the villages, uh, there they, they seems to all this, the crunching of numbers, the trade share index, really go way over their head. When you talk about derivatives, yeah. this is not something they can actually relate to. I think, I would want to say that uh, if you look at the profile of the retail investor in Kenya, the profile of the retail investor in Kenya is not uh, uh, really the, the elite. If you look at the register of the retail investor, these are the... Are the, are the are the people who are really in the what I would call the um, rural sector, uh, people who come for those AGMs, just visit one of our AGMs and see the people who are there. You'd be surprised. So there is, it's not an elitist market, and I think we've opened that. What we have to and look at the IPO in Safaricom. It was over two million uh, investors who came through, highly retail. Okay, so it's um, it's not that there's a lack of knowledge. It's more about. Um, uh, us bringing in more attractive uh, mm -hmm. issues maybe mm -hmm. to the market, and mm -hmm. that's something that we're working on. Uh, making access to the market yes, easier, yes. maybe through mobile platforms, etc., which we're working on, and just increasing the awareness, uh, mm -hmm. as I totally agree with everybody here. Now, one thing about markets, you cannot have a one-directional market. Uh, a market has to be, uh, it has to be uh, two-directional. You must have, uh, it must go up and down, because when somebody's buying, somebody's selling, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There's no way you can give an insurance on a price. When you are investing, you actually have to also be aware that there's a risk in that investment, mm -hmm. in any investment. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that level of free market play has to happen. Um, 
this, and I would like to come back in this debate when the index is at 5,000, and let's see what my colleagues here will say. Uh, because right now, I think there's a lot of focus on where we are because of the state of the market. But these markets have been extremely rewarding. What are the components of rewards in, in stock markets? One, you have dividends. Two, you have capital gains. Okay? And those capital gains is when you buy and sell, there's a profit. Now that profit, that buying and selling is a very, very attractive opportunity. Stocks like Safaricom, for instance, have come from two shillings to 30 shillings. Where, where do you get those kind of returns? You know, they're extremely, extremely attractive. So we just have to continuously educate on these particular uh, opportunities. We have seen, for instance, in the real estate, how do we then ma make real estates affordable? And we've been created a product called a real estate investment trust, where you can buy units of, of, a, of a building as opposed to buying it directly. And again, it's a very attractive opportunity. So we appreciate there's need for us to give more education. I think I like your point about target marketing, especially to the new pools of money, uh, in order for us to, to increase the number of uh, uh, investors in the market. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So uh, I can see there's a question here being asked uh, by a viewer here. Kenya Daima, uh, where is it? Uh, it's, a, it's about technology, I'm trying to. Yeah, he's, he, this is Peter Ndirangu saying, the problem with the NSE is technology. They make the market easy, they make the market easy accessible through phones, laptop, basically online. They will solve if, I think the preposition is missing there, if they make the market easily or easy accessible through phones, laptop, basically online, they will solve their liquidity problems and investors' numbers. The problem is technology and information access still just, uh, you know, lingering on the same aspect. But when it, the technology aspect of it, how will be your response? I do appreciate. Uh, we have, we've have realized um, that there's need for us to provide more access. Mm -hmm. uh, the model we use on Emma Kiba has informed about a lot of decisions on how can we uh, enable Kenyans access the market through uh, various front ends, mm -hmm. for instance, uh, your, your, your telephone, your apps, and we have come up, we're actually developing uh, an app for mobile equity trading, mm -hmm. which will be very available very soon. And Kenyans will be able to apply, to apply for, uh, buy their shares through that platform. Uh, delivering in, uh, information, for instance, about uh, announcements through the mobile phone. That's mm -hmm. another area. Mm -hmm. uh, so information delivery through that channel. So I totally agree that uh, we must make the market more accessible through uh, other channels and channels is going to be another very big phase for us in our new strategy. He raised an important question on uh, the issue of uh, farms also and uh, mismanagement of the farms and how also they affect you know the the share value on uh, the NEC as well. Yeah. Uh, right now we have a dynamic uh, that uh, I don't know how maybe the shareholders can be you know treated when it comes to the mergers that we're having, KCB and the NBK, yeah. and we know they were given this uh, one-month period yeah. that uh, I think is it by the end of September 30th, then they should be delisted. I don't know how that process is ongoing, but when we have such a scenario where there's a buyout or there's a merger or there's a joint venture, then how does, how does the dynamics work within the, the NEC where we have people who've invested uh, in shares? Um. <coughs> I think when mergers take place, uh, you, you normally have what you call share swaps. Share swaps. Okay. Now, share swaps is where, for instance, the buying entity and the target entity, uh, there's an agreement that the shares of the target, of the target uh, entity, which has been bought out, are then converted into shares of the buying entity. And so, for instance, in the case of NBK, uh, for every 10 shares of NBK, you are getting one share of KCB. Uh, ideally, what they did in terms of pricing, NBK was trading at four shillings and uh, KCB is at 40 shillings. So the ratios work out. It evens out. <laughs> uh, but the, the beauty is that... It's going to be 40-40. Uh, no, but uh, it's, trading, uh, <laughs> it's trading at four shillings. So. <laughs> it's a multiple of 10. Um, so, so, so it's not the, 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 it's not the, uh, the number of shares. It's mm -hmm. the value of shares. It's the value of shares. That's what, that's what somebody should look at. Okay. And then what happens then? This big entity, and you heard about them being a one trillion bank, yeah, then has opportunity to grow further and stronger, and even the new, the the tag, the people coming from the target company are then able to enjoy the value, the holistic value of the new grown entity, and that's that's really the the benefit of this whole transaction. And I think uh, creation of strong 
uh, institutions is very critical. Mm -hmm. uh, if our markets are to grow, we need to have very big companies, and I'm delighted to see what the banks are doing towards the regional expansion and just making sure that the, at the end of the day, it's the shareholders who will actually enjoy. Uh, to your point about management of companies, um, we are cognizant of the fact that we need to, to really uh, have strong oversight. So two things I've done. We have uh, a regulatory arm that looks at companies uh, from a first frontline perspective and making sure that we have early warning systems to ensure that we can s sense distress coming through mm -hmm. early enough. Secondly, with the CMA, we are coming up with what you call a recovery board, where companies that recovery uh, board. Are, in are in distress okay. uh, go through a recovery board, and during a period of time, they work towards re re sort of sorting out the issues they have so that they can go back to the to, to normal to, to the main boards or whichever board they were earlier listed. What does the recovery board tend to do? The recovery board is not a delisting. It's basically a, a platform where now you're told you've got these listing challenges. As you want to address them, trading will continue. Mm -hmm. But investors are now more aware that these companies have certain concerns and we want to help. We want to, I can actually buy them uh, knowing the, with the very knowledge that they could be having certain issues. But currently as we are, uh, these companies are currently in the, in the main market and investors are not aware of all the risks they face. So it's more like um, a remedial mm -hmm. uh, arrangement just to help companies recover fast. Uh, it's not our intention to delist companies. We want to have the market growing. We want to have companies coming into the market, and we just want to make sure that they remain strong uh, by us providing strong oversight. So that's going to continue to be a very key area for us as we watch. Uh, we're also attracting new companies. As I spoke about the pipeline we have under Ibuka, uh, we have got 17 companies coming through, mm -hmm. and a number of these are looking at listing in a couple of, uh, in, 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 in a year, in the next one year or so. And we're going to continue to see more entry into the market. What would like to, our aspiration, or what's going to be our success, mm -hmm. is, to, is to have Kenyans who start SM, S, as SME businesses become listed companies, being like their end and success stories. Because that is how companies, how markets grow. You have to really, really find a way of a small company that you started becoming a company that you can actually share in the future and ensure that you're able to continuously uh, sustain your existence uh, beyond just your behind the founders and that's really going to be success yes.